America. Today's episode of the Swing Podcast is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Do you think you know fantasy? Do you think you know player props? Well, Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports app built for that. With over 1.3 million in prizes since launching in 2018, only worry about the top tier athletes in your sport. In an NBA lineup, choose five out of the top 10 player prop options to build your lineup. The more risky the option, the greater the prize pool. Use promo code SWING when you sign up today and receive an instant $20 bonus on your first deposit of $20 or more. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Google Play or visit their website at www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. Hello and welcome to The Swing, where once again we're back this week to talk about more excitement in the bubble. We're a week away from the playoffs, and I am joined by my boy Oasis to break it all down for you and where we're going to go. What it do, baby? I've been doing great, my friend. We've seen some incredible basketball over the last week, and we're really excited to talk about it as these games are coming to an end and the playoff basketball it is about to begin. Woo! It's there. I, August 17th, the playoffs start. Just I uh, can't wait. We're getting there day by day. But just before we do, there is unfinished business, unsettled matters, and frankly, some people that are going to be quite surprised at who may end up in the West, the eight seed battle. Always, we are here to talk about that incredible, incredible matchup that we've had. This kind of standings that we've had, how tight everything is. Tight. Who's getting in, Oasis? Who is getting in? I don't know. We don't know yet. But what we do know is that we're going to break it down for you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the West. There's four teams in particular that we are looking at. We'll get to them in a second. There's two teams that actually have, unfortunately, been eliminated. Who are they? Man, you wouldn't have thought it would be the first thing to happen, but... <laughs> Even despite the schedule and everything else that goes with it, J.J. Reddick's playoff streak has been broken as the New Orleans Pelicans have officially been eliminated from playoff contention. Did you see this coming? To be honest, no, I didn't. I actually, we, in earlier podcasts, we talked about how we wanted this team to compete. Mm. They had a great opportunity. I know the games were against them in a sense that you know they had what a window of two or three losses and that was it mm. but regardless the important thing is we wanted to see that character come out we wanted Lonzo to oh, live up to his Ooh, last name and balls and we wanted Ingram well Ingram did play oh Ingram played well but the rest of the team just did not do it and the New Orleans Pelicans mm. unfortunately have been eliminated Zion Williamson had become zero and <laughs> That's the name of the game. Sorry, JJ. Yeah. Look, Zion was uh, impressive in the limited minutes he did play. There's no doubt that there is a long way for him to go from a physical standpoint to be able to handle the rigors of the NBA. He was handled with kid gloves as expected upon mm-hmm. coming back. But going back to Lonzo, just, just listen to me for a moment on this, all right? 5.7 points, 5.3 rebounds, 7 assists, shooting 26% from the field, and 42% from the free throw line. Those were Lonzo's numbers inside the bubble. When we talk about TJ Warren being the bubble MVP, mm. if there's a bubble bust, mm, I think Lonzo might be the one stinking it up there. God Absolutely. damn. Absolutely. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. You know, the sad thing is, is he has immense potential. Mm. And I personally thought, sight lines being better, a lot of basketball players have been shooting a lot better and playing a lot better. You've seen offensive break breakouts from a lot of different teams Mm -hmm. uh, but not for Lonzo and it just didn't cut it and that just shows that he has a lot of work to still be done in his game to polish himself up to be what the Pelicans need him to be for the future and the success of this franchise that's all we're going to talk about in terms of the Pelicans Sacramento also (laughs) a really sad situation honestly they've shot themselves in the foot the way it's set up First of all, I still can't understand the minutes or lack thereof they give to Buddy Heald. It doesn't make any sense to me. I like Bogdan Bogdanovich. He should be in the lineup, but it doesn't make sense for 
him to not be on the lineup with him. They did that for the vast majority of the year with them switching around at the two and three, Bielitsa going there to be able to play small on the four. But it just, they decided to just move away from that, give all the minutes to Harrison Barnes instead, which I understand you've paid him, but you know what? You can swap Barnes over to the four and play small with Rashawn Holmes as they should be doing. But Sacramento just played horribly throughout this despite a couple of offensive breakouts and still not finishing out the games. But the Kings eliminated as expected. Not much to talk about for them. Vladdy needs to go back to the drawing board and they either need to figure out what they're going to do with Buddy Heald or they need to move on because De'Aaron Fox who played really well Absolutely. in this time. It's not right for him to have to pretty much carry the entire team on his shoulders from an offensive perspective for the Sacramento Kings to be 100%. even somewhat relevant. Yeah, I'm going to make a call right now. I don't think that Buddy Heald is going to be a king next year. Hmm. That's just my prediction. Um, a lot of teams can use him, though. Oh, man. Great three-point shooter, great versatility on the offensive end. Um, and so, unfortunately, again, Sacramento Kings eliminated. But we're going to move on to these four teams. No doubt. And those four teams, ladies and gentlemen, battling it for that last final eighth spot in the West are the Memphis Grizzlies, mm. the San Antonio, pop San Antonio Spurs. The Phoenix Suns, and of course, Dame Dalla and his boys of Portland trying to make their own statement to try and get in. Much to my chagrin, because I bet against them getting into the playoffs. <laughs> but no doubt, those four teams are pretty much within a game and a half of each other. And look, the team that was in the incumbent eight spot here was the Memphis Grizzlies. Yep. I was pretty confident that they would be able to stick in that spot and be the ones to come through once the bubble started. But unfortunately, the downsides of being a young team with a lack of depth is that when an injury hits it to hits one of your key hard. guys, it hits hard. It hits especially hard on a team that otherwise is lacking in offensive options. And then when it's a guy like Jaron Jackson Jr., who is a game changer not only not on, on the offensive end, yeah, but the defensive end as well. The defensive end and being the kind of stretch four he's become shooting nearly 40% from three, even though his action looks like it's Sean Marion going up there. But it's... Mm, Double-handed, but it's beautiful. It gets in, and that's a massive loss for them. What do you it think, is. always? Absolutely. Um, we talk about Memphis Grizzlies as being one of the most unique teams in the NBA. And why I say unique is because they are actually the NBA's leading team in points in the paint. So they like to get real dirty, right? And, of course, you've got slashers like Morant, Dylan Brooks. Jackson was probably their only three-point shooter that has been doing consistently well. Mm. Uh, Valanchunas, all of these guys really dominating in the paint. Um, uh, like, boards-wise, they've been insane. Yeah. However, the problem now is when you lose that depth with Jaron Jackson, you have to rely on guys like Dylan Brooks. <laughs> if I am to say there is a sole reason as to why Memphis isn't playing so well, is because of the type of play Dylan, the type of player Dylan Brooks is in yeah. this situation. I personally would hope that you know, maybe JV would get a few more touches. That's been pretty successful. They've been pretty successful in the paint. But what I have noticed is Dylan Brooks is playing pretty much one and chuck. What I, what that means is, as soon as I get the ball, mm. I'm gonna throw it Man. up. Whether it's this ugly floater from literally a Demar long mid range sort of situation, mm. or he just chucks up a three, and he's not. It's not like, okay, so the thing is, is it's not like he's not scoring. Yeah. He's still scoring about maybe 18 to 20 points a game. Mm -hmm. But it's at, like, the cost of, like, 20 shots. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's... Not even getting to the line like that. And he's not even shooting well from the free throw line. So what ends up happening is you're taking shots away from other guys that probably would do a much more efficient job. Memphis, surprisingly, is still one of the leading teams within assists. And so that a lot of that goes with you know the distribution that Morant, even JV mm -hmm. has been doing uh, really really well, and just that movement's been okay. But when that ISO ball starts to happen, with Dylan Brooks tries to take over, also stupid fouls like he gives up so many unnecessary fouls mm -hmm. that costs them in terms of their games. They are at the current moment, I believe, one in six in in the. Uh, one in five. Of one in five. Six games. They lost to, to Portland, go. San Antonio, mm -hmm. New Orleans. New Orleans. They lost to New Orleans. That was okay. Game. Utah and Toronto more recently. Mm -hmm. The only one they had was against OKC. And again, one of the situations was not so much that they were playing any good basketball. 
I'm not going to lie, OKC lost that game themselves. Anyway, with that being said, you know, we know that the only way they can make it, in my opinion, is if they become a lot more sound in terms of those turnovers. Mm. I think that, again, Dylan Brooks, he's going to co- he's the biggest anchor. If you can find more ways to get maybe even Jaw involved, like I think Jaw's taking about seven, 16 to 17 shots a game. Um, give him like two or three more shots. Mm. Get him to the line. Get some free throws. Um, or even test out JV for a few more shots. I think they're in pretty good hands because, again, one of the most unique things about them is they have that presence inside, and a lot of teams cannot handle that very well. So if they use that to their strength and space the floor out for, like, let's say, um, well, they can't really space the floor, but if they allow the slashers to slash mm. and, you know, you have JV backing them up, they're in good position. But again, a lot of discipline is needed. This team, in my opinion, does not look like they're going to make that eight spot. Yeah, the funny enough, I mean, of the teams that were in that race, Memphis looked like they would be the ones to be stuck in eight, and then if potentially have a play-in tournament, they'd be fighting mm-hmm. for that. But right now, it looks like if it ends up, they could potentially just be out of that eight nine slot altogether with yeah. some of the runs that uh, the the other teams are making One, out there. So we'll talk about those teams. Yeah. I'm really excited to hear what you got to say. Can we start? Can I pick who we start with? Please, by all means. I am excited to. Okay, first of all, Devin Booker Woo! has been on fire. Like, as if Kobe's soul, like his, his <laughs> presence, his ghost, is just engulfed into him. And they, he just, he's turned it on. Talk about the Suns. I'm actually really surprised about how well they're playing. So, here's two things about it. I'm not surprised that they're playing well. Because they have always had the, the talent on this team to be they able to do that. started really well in the year. Yeah, they yeah. did. And look, DeAndre Ayton and his stupid 25-game suspension really screwed around with what the Phoenix Suns wanted to do this year. But now, they're clicking. I mean... The way that this roster is coming together currently, it is a very, very well-balanced roster for what Devin Booker is looking to do. Mm -hmm. It is allowing for someone like Ricky Rubio to create so much space and so much chaos when he is slashing. And Rubio has been really, really good for the Phoenix Suns. As much as I laugh about the TJ Warren trade, I mean, they could have done a number of different things for the cash considerations and kept TJ Warren. But the, at least that money was well used because it did bring in Ricky Rubio for them. Absolutely. And that has been huge for their playmaking because Devin Booker is having the best season of his career. And it's not just that he himself is improving to such a level because he is. Devin Booker has been a killer since he's came into the league. 100%. 70, 20, what, 71 points one time? Yeah. 72? And that was in an L. But yeah. now he's scoring them in wins. But in this bubble, he has been a monster scoring over 30 points a game at 50 percent shooting 94 percent from the free throw line on eight attempts a game he has just been a monster and dude those shots that he's taking some of them are not very easy shots either it's not like it's something he has to create and he's still doing it so effectively he's wet like his book no doubt shout out to drake drake if you see this But yeah, I mean, he's got a game winner already in here. What a game winner. <laughs> what a too. game winner that was, too. And who to do it, too. It was beautiful. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it was Paul George. It was on Paul George. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is a poster. See, there's poster boys for dunks, which is usually like Pau Gasol. Yeah. But when it comes to getting your, your, your butt sent home <laughs> from a game winner, it is Paul George. You'll see him in all those pictures. <laughs> and it was this nasty turnaround game. And the thing is, no matter how it looked, I didn't think it was going anywhere but no. net. It was clean. It clean. Clean swish. And it's just a confidence that the Phoenix Suns have. The downside on their end is just plain and simple. This is the first six-game win streak they've had since 2014, by the how way. How crazy. How is crazy that? is that? Well, it's not as crazy because the Phoenix Suns have been terrible they for so have. long. But is it a case of too little too late? Even if they were to go 8-0 in this uh, in this bubble, which very well could happen given the uh, remaining games that they have going for them, but they are still going to require a couple of results to go their way. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Memphis's remaining two games are going to be against Boston and Milwaukee. Which are tough games also. Yeah, even if they're arresting their guys, which could happen, Mm -hmm. although I have less uh, doubt that Milwaukee will play their starters now because of the fact that First of all, that game is still going to be on a Thursday, so they'd still get a couple of days before the playoffs. Secondly, they have uh, already been resting uh, you know, a Giannis. couple of their starters. They had that game against Brooklyn where they rested everyone pretty much through the game. Giannis now has an oral surgery to get done. 
But the Bucks are going to want to be clicking on all cylinders going into the playoffs. So I am confident that they're going to play their guys against Memphis. So assuming Memphis loses their two games, it's really going to come down to if the Suns can finish off their run, which I'm confident they are because the Sixers, Embiid is out. Mm-hmm. Embiid's already out for the next game. Simmons is out for the season now with his surgery, which is also unfortunate. And but now, Jay Rich, how about that guy? Oh, Jay Rich had, had a great, great game. game. <laughs> and we were talking smack about him the other day. He heard us, of course. Well, anyway. look, it's what it took to have. You had, you had to have Simmons out. You had to have him beat out. And then Jay Rich finally got the shots that he was wow. getting and had the capability of kind of doing his own thing. So, look, there's obviously undeniable talent on that Sixers team, but this is not their year, as we've clearly seen. Boston's probably licking their chops at having them in the first round yeah. as it stands. So, we'll talk about Philly more later, but. The Phoenix Suns will feel confident that they can get past the 76ers there, and that really leaves them with their game against the Mavericks. And that's if the Mavericks even play their starters. Yeah, because the Mavericks are pretty well set in uh, where they are now. I mean, we're pretty much looking at them being in that seventh slot. So they're thinking about their first-round matchup with the Clippers, which, by the way, is going to be, in my opinion, the series of the first round. It's going to be really, really insane to watch Luka get his first taste of the playoffs, bubble playoffs. Yeah. But I'm really excited for that. So Phoenix is going to really, really be hoping for that stuff to come in their way because I think that they can get into that 8-9 slot, which gets gets them into a potential matchup with the other team mm-hmm. that is on a mission as well. So before we talk about Debo, would you talk to me a little bit about the Blazers as well? Mike, okay, so we just talked about how game winners are a thing against Paul George. Mm. But... We're going to take that a little bit further. Not just game winners, not just series enders, but now Twitter and Instagram <laughs> beef. So, well, the other team is the Portland Trailblazers. Mm. We're really excited to see what they're doing. Carmelo is balling out. You have Nurkic back. That adds just so much more depth and space to the floor. Dame time. How many points did he get last game? Something like 51. 51, 51, 51 to win that game. That pretty much was a must-win must game win. for them. They and needed to come back from Dame the double digit. time. Ladies and gentlemen, he was there. He was ready. And he, all those trolls, those idiots such as Pat Beverly, Paul <laughs> George, although I found that to be hilarious. Um, you know, it's, it's just insane to see when this team turns it on because they have so many options and guys that can literally create buckets for themselves. Mm. That's the exciting part to see in this sort of bubble. You've yeah. seen TJ Warren. He's also a guy who creates. Now you have like four TJ Warrens on a team <laughs> and you're like, okay, who's going to pop off today? Yeah. And if all of them pop off, it's insane to watch, right? So Portland, talk about them, man. Man, the Blazers have been as much as I <laughs> have hated to see it because for me, Portland was dead and buried mm-hmm. coming into this. If that season had continued on as it is, Portland was 100% missing the playoffs. <laughs> but they have now <laughs> rallied themselves and pulled off incredible incredible games so that they're definitely going to be a one of eight or nine so they're going to be in that play in tournament it's all going to come down to whether they're going to need to win two games or whether they're going to need to win one you know what really makes me laugh i'm just going to shout out our podcast from like earlier in the season Hmm. we were talking about mellow infinite when he came back (laughs) and everything like that so it's great to see like you know we really thought that mellow would have done horribly Hmm. like we just didn't think it would be a great fit but he's cut down a lot of weight, and shout out to him for this. Like, I mean, this is the shooter's bubble, right? Literally, quite literally, the, yeah. the hooper's bubble. So to see him perform the way he's been performing, mm. it's just been great to see. And actually, you know, if we had said stuff that was disrespectful, <laughs> I mean, 15. I mean, Dame's already now. been pulling it out on yeah. everyone who's been hating on Melo. But you know what? Melo has adapted his game, and there's also, I would say, a certain level of passion that's coming out to redeem himself. 1,000%. Because he's motivated. Yeah, exactly. He's motivated. And you know what? I don't care uh, all it is. Bello deserved every bit of the reputation he had yeah. coming in to this Portland team. He was selfish. Quite plain and simple. Exactly. A selfish baller. Went for but the dollars. And you know what? Now he's with Dame Dollar. Di- with Dame. And I'll tell you the biggest difference. And uh, people might say that this is the most ridiculous observation you've ever made always. Because I do make a lot of ridiculous observations. Ridiculously right observations. <laughs> But Tell him, da- so, just Melo losing that weight hmm. during that quarantine time, I think that was a difference maker because now he's like, okay, I have to adapt my game so that my team's more successful, so mm-hmm. I can play better for my team. 
So I don't personally think that came from a selfish perspective. Mm. That came from a perspective of my team's quick. Mm. I need to adapt. I can't be that slow poke anymore. Yeah. So let's ball out with them and let's make this happen. And that is the most selfless I've seen Carmelo ever. And so that makes me, as a basketball fan, someone mm. who consistently hated on Melo, respect him a lot more. I respect his game in the sense he's been an incredible basketball player, one of the best to ever do it. But just to see that selfish, that selflessness is really humbling, and I'm really excited to see what Portland does. Anything else you want to add about Portland? Yeah. Look, there's no way that you can get past Portland and Yusuf Nurkic at the front. No. I mean, he has been the catalyst for everything that has changed on that team defensively. He Look, is so dominant. He has been absolutely dominant. And Hassan Whiteside, who himself was having a good number season, he was not having a good season from a plus-minus perspective, but that change in which not only has Hassan accepted His that role. that was the case, yeah. accepted the role, gotten there, but for Yusuf Nurkic to come back and just instantly stamp his authority on the game yep. that he plays. Look, uh, to me, their signature win was the one against the Rockets. And as far as I'm concerned, that Rockets win was because how Yusuf Nurkic was able to take advantage, not only of winning the rebounding battle, because that was to be expected, exactly. but the way he was able to change around so many shots that were happening and also create so many second chance points, which Daryl Morey has talk, talked about. Houston is pretty much like a fantasy team that's punting <laughs> rebounds, right? Yeah. They'll punt rebounds, but they're looking to win the other categories. And for them, the category they look to win, apart from everything else, is limiting those second chance points. To them, that is the way to beat the Rockets. And Yusuf Nurkic, in that matchup and in the way he played, was the reason why they were able to do that and handle the three-point shooting of that. So what that allows is having someone like Nurkic, who not only is so dominant inside, but he almost averages five assists a game. It's just how much court vision he has. And plain and simple, I think Portland didn't believe that they were good enough without having someone like Nurkic to kind of right. boost them. I think he's given them that much boost that they now feel confident that it's they the can confidence. beat any team in the league. 100%. And the biggest thing about big men who can facilitate the ball really, really well, and if they have IQ, it's a similar situation to Marcus All, mm. right? Like, they come into a team, and what it does is for your backcourt, it, it literally just gives them so much confidence to go out there and ball like themselves and not try to force anything, right? Having that presence, having that ability to cut whenever they want or at least help them create those shots with big screens, like that is so, so big for co the confidence of, you know, guys like CJ McCollum, even Melo, but Lillard mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And one thing I really, really enjoy about Nurkic's game is that prior to even getting injured, you know, Portland was still a threat. Yeah. And that was solely because of the chemistry those three guys had, right? And now he's back, and he's looking better than ever. Oh, yeah. And so, really excited to see what they do. What, do you, what is your prediction, though? Yeah, I mean, I know we'll, we'll talk about the Spurs first, because that yeah, is the other team absolutely. to be able to get that. But, yeah, let's hold off on the okay, predictions. So who, Tell me about yeah, the Spurs. Who's, okay, so the Spurs, personally, I haven't watched enough of the Spurs to make much of a comment. Mm. But what I saw was maybe the first few games where DeMar was playing out of his mind. And that was it. That was it. It's classic Spurs basketball. They're not actually shooting the three. Like, Actually, they're one of the highest 3% shooting teams. But in terms of the volume, it's yeah. really not there. Pop system. Yeah, I mean, look, the, there's two players to me that have really, in my opinion, taken a solid step forward for the Spurs. First of all, Rudy Gay, mm -hmm. who has been pretty much out of it for the entire season. But you can tell that this rest has been rejuvenating for him. Yeah, he's like you, you see, Yeah, exactly. You've seen that for a lot of these veteran players that have come in, that, you know, these professionals, they've clearly taken this time off to get themselves in a better position to yeah. succeed because there it's been a long time since Rudy has played as well as he is right now and for him to average about 19 points a game for them essentially come uh, either coming off the bench or starting depending on the matchup but to do that on pretty much 40 47 percent shooting which is insane for a Rudy Rudy Gay is not a 47 percent shooter ever yeah but, well, not since Memphis days right well, of but course. yeah so Rudy Gay being a huge pick uh, a huge jump for them on an offensive perspective has been massive for the Spurs who have in my opinion played the most consistent ball of those Western teams that are mm -hmm. in the bubble I'd say some would have a higher ceiling to come through but just like Greg Popovich, you know you would expect back in the day 50 win, 50 win, 50 win seasons. That consistency hasn't gone. But the other player I really want to give a huge shout out to is Derek White. Okay. Derek White has been 
huge, huge for this team. So not only has that allowed Deontay Murray to not have to worry as much about his shooting side of it, because Derek White has pretty much transitioned to full-time shooting guard for them. Mm -hmm. He's averaging nearly 20 points a game, in fact, a little over 20 points a game for them, while shooting almost four threes a game that he's hitting as well. Which is insane. So, like, him has allowed so much space to be created, because DeMar, he's not even trying for threes anymore. It's just one he of those where... Yeah, it, it, you could saw you saw at one point when he was with the Raptors that, hey, I'm trying to add this dimension to his game, but the fact of the matter is, at 31 years old, DeMar is who DeMar is at this point, right? He's going to be a slasher, and he's going to be a mid-range guy. And that Derek White evolution, alongside obviously the other three-point shooting yeah. that the Spurs always have, has allowed DeMar to be himself. And especially considering the fact that LaMarcus is not here for the bubble, they needed these other guys to step up. Mm -hmm. And that big man has been covered quite well by Jakob yeah. Pertl, playing quite well for He's them. Doing great. Consistent guy. Because what that allows you to do is, you know someone is there to help clean up your mistakes, and he himself won't make mistakes. Which right. is what I always loved about Jakob Pertl when he was on the Raptors. And he's a big body, man. And he fights for the ball. Like So uh, any of these big time, um, you know, big center sort of matchups, he holds himself pretty pretty well. Yeah. And that's really, really interesting to see. I, 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 per I personally never would have thought that from Jakob, but he's called the Big Yak for a reason, <laughs> The right? Big Yak is the portal um, gun. Yeah, the portal gun. But yeah, I, so the thing with White is, I actually remember um, a while back, they did a little bit of a documentary on him and mm. where he's pretty much come from, right? A lot of his success came from the injury of Murray, mm. right? People didn't really know who he was. I think he was kind of like a G League sort of yeah. on and yeah, off with the team. Yeah, he came late in the league really. And um, yeah, he accepted his role, earned Pop's trust, and look at him now. He's been falling out and he's not just an offensive threat especially from the three lines which is very rare for the Spurs to be even using as an option but also defensively he's done very well picking up a lot of the more tougher guards and um, you know when you have a sturdy guy like that mm -hmm. um, you know you, you could only be so happy as a coach yeah and, and like I said there's to me there's nothing that's immediately wrong about how the Spurs are playing, and they could very well be in that 8-9 slot to be able to come back. They, their only thing is all about the ceiling that they can reach. This team clearly is you know, very well coached, as always. <laughs> they know their role, and they're playing well. The fact of the matter is, of all these teams that are fighting in that bubble, I would say they're the least talented of the okay. teams that are coming through. Yep. And that, when we get to predictions, is going to be the reason why they will eventually end up missing out on here but i think they have a lot of positives to look through to next season Absolutely. from some of their young guys yeah i mean of course um so then let's just get right into the prediction yeah. right? i know you've been waiting for it Ooh. i've been waiting for it i haven't heard what he thinks about <laughs> it you haven't heard what i think about it he doesn't care what i say <laughs> but let's get right into it do you want me to start go for I it i think i'll start okay personally i think the two teams that will end up in that game for that eighth spot are going to be the Portland Trailblazers and the San Antonio Spurs. I okay. think those are the two teams that are going to end up going. Mm -hmm. And I personally think that just the way Portland's been playing has been so impressive to me, at least, that I think that this was the season for so many different reasons, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I truly think that Portland's going to make it. And I think, again, like we talked about, Nurkic's presence has changed so much. Yeah. And... There's not much more I can explain. I think HK's done a great job explaining how well they've been playing and why they've been playing so well. Um, and that's my prediction. So Portland's going to make it. Yeah. Portland's going to be the one to They're make the playoffs? They're going to make the playoffs. Okay. That game's going to be between the Spurs and the... Okay. So Portland's going to be in the 8th seed and Spurs are going to be in the ninth. Yeah. And, and then that... Portland's going to make it through. Okay. Making it through. Like I said, it's the way Portland's playing, no doubt. I do have them in the matchup there. But much like I said... I think that the Phoenix Suns have just... It's a dream. It's a dream. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dream season. They are white hot at this moment. And they have, in my opinion, the momentum going through yes, to be able to get them do. there. So, to me, that's going to be the matchup on there. The difficulty is going to be in that the Suns are likely going to be the team that's going to be the ninth seed coming into that. Mm -hmm. So, they're going to have to beat Portland getting into eighth twice because that's how the playing tournament's going to yep. work on here, right? So that's going to work into the Trailblazers' favor, and begrudgingly, I'll say that Portland should feel confident in winning one of those two to be able to get in. 
but let's just say the heart is really hoping for a Devin Booker showing in the playoffs because I've seen Portland in the playoffs and frankly I think the Lakers as much as you know Portland I would say is top to bottom a more talented team than the Suns I think the Lakers will feel better facing the Trailblazers than they would this current Why Phoenix Suns that? team because of that fuck you factor that <laughs> Devin Booker will have coming in the amount of disrespect that Devin Booker has had in the league plain and simple because of the fact that he's been on a bad team this idea that he is a paper superstar or this idea that he is just not as good as a lot of people like to put him right he's been crowned as one of the best guards by far in the game obviously has had his big scoring games but it has not led to wins in the past and that has been a legitimate criticism of Devin Booker's game and I think he is waiting for this opportunity this moment. yeah to Lakers are going to win the series, but I see it as an exciting six-game series that the Phoenix Suns can have with the the LA Lakers if they were to do it because Devin Booker will have two games where he just decides to go supernova and pull it off so no one doubts him again. Come on. Do it. Torch up. I would love it. I actually would love that too. Like, Devin Booker, especially, like, you think about who can honestly guard that guy. Nobody, nobody can guard him. He just guards himself if he needs to. He just gets in his head. You know, jo- joke him. No one telling people in the off season to double team him. <laughs> Let's just work on our games. No, oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you know that's exciting. I think I'd be happy if either one of those teams go. Like any one of those four teams go in, it's going to be exciting basketball nonetheless. Mm. We just love a story. Yeah. And I think Devin Booker's story is something that we've been waiting. People have been waiting on. Draymond commented and got in trouble, right? (laughs) That he should get out of Phoenix? Yeah, and I think, considering, look, Devin Booker just signed that five-year extension this last year, right? So it's clear that he has Has shown his commitment. Exactly. And I think that just from everything, again, you never know what's going on in a player's mind, but from everything we've outwardly seen, Devin Booker seems pretty committed to Phoenix, in my opinion, right? Yeah. Stupid ownership (laughs) separated from that. Well, that old lady, that that season ticket holder fan lady... (laughs) really said something to hurt them to the point that they made some changes. Big, big time changes. I, I gotta find that clip for you guys. We'll post it on our Instagram. Um, but yeah, like, uh, really excited to see what happens with this West situation. Yes, sir. But I think that's all we got for today. Absolutely. We're gonna keep an eye out on this. Again, playoffs start August the 17th, so we're just seven days away from the playoffs, so obviously we're gonna find out where we end up. Keep yourself tuned in on the swing make sure to follow us not only on youtube but on instagram as well like the video and we'll see you again peace